right so welcome to uh, steam professional chat a new podcast series by i steam care the purpose of this podcast to bring diverse interesting and non traditional career stories from science technology engineering arts and mathematics that is steam professionals uh, f- across the globe we hope our conversation with these professionals will be helpful for many of you to help craft your own career journey in future our guest for today is dr bipul sharma uh, dr bipul sharma is the assistant director of post doctoral affairs at the university of chicago he also serves as the co-chair of diversity talks course for national post doctoral association in the in united states bipul receives his uh, phd in cardiovascular development genetics from the institute of genetic medicine from newcastle university in uk and he later he did his postdoc at washington university in st louis missouri in the united states during his uh, postdoctoral training in addition to his research on understanding heart development and cognitive neural heart defects he started getting actively involved in in the campus postdoctoral association and outreach activities serving as executive mm-hmm. council member and outreach director uh in collaboration with university office of postdoctoral affair and office of diversity and equity and inclusion on project championing uh, across uh, helping many postdocs across the universities through these initiative he's he's especially passionate about graduate and postdoctoral affairs like mentorship education policy making and increasing representation and diversity in higher education and leadership lo- roles he is a avid writer he has been writing op-ed for inside higher education times higher education and npa post post docket on different themes and in free time he enjoys spending time with his uh, cute cats so thank you dr bipul for joining us today well thank you for having me um so it's a, it's a, you know it's always good to talk to people with similar interests So so thank you for having me. Thanks Vipul. Um and I want to ask you where are the cats? <laughs> <laughs> I know I wish I could bring them to work with me. Oh but, I wish uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah unfortunately I don't bring them to work. Um so the work, work at home time was actually they enjoyed that that I was work most of the times but now that I started coming back to office you know we have to have some kind of distance. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's not new normal so far to get cats on campus. <laughs> right, right. Well, one day, hopefully. One day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So, uh let's start at the beginning. Uh we and our viewers and listeners would like to know a little bit about your back story. So, can you tell us in short maybe like were you always dreaming to be working at the postdoctoral office or did you have some other on ambitions and they changed as you went on to study in india first and then uk and then united states and how that did that journey come about right yeah i think uh, you know i yes i kind of would have to say that uh, but first so like you know i think pavan kind of gave a little bit of background so i'll just build on that um i did not dream of being in postdoc office uh you know when i was a kid um i think growing up i was always interested in biology basically so i think that was my first kind of you know um uh, i guess like you know hint that i wanted to go either become a medical doctor or uh go do my phd do something which is related to biology um and so so yeah so i think uh in india i think it's like after your after your 10th 10th standard you have to you know pick up what line you want to go in so so yeah i picked biology and then i did my my btech and my mtech in biotechnology um from india um and uh yeah during that time i i was very interested in research uh doing lab work uh going to lab and you know doing experiments always you know excited me um i think i always got a uh kind of like a thrill when the experiments worked <laughs> so so i think yeah i think it was 
you know, the whole process of going to lab and doing experiments was very exciting to me and just learning new things. Uh, I was very focused in microbiology at that time. Uh, but with time, my focus and my interest kind of moved towards uh, developmental biology and congenital defects, um, which is why I... I when I did my PhD, I wrote a lot of questions. So because I had that, you know, field I want to go in, so I could, you know, nail, like, you know, focus down on, like, kind of narrow down on the professors. I my my main thing was kind of, you know, just to just to do good science, uh, basically, and. Uh, uh, I got a position, uh, a PhD position in, in the UK, in Newcastle University. Uh, I went there and uh, I, I was there three and a half years, so three years of lab work and uh, uh, six months of uh, my thesis writing. However, I started applying for postdoc positions before my thesis defense and uh, that is how I landed a position at WashU in St. Louis. Um, and yeah, I think that was, uh, you know, it's like, that's a new country again, a total new adventure. So, uh, and it was the, 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 the research area was again, like cardiac development and congenital heart defects. So I already has had expertise in that field. So I thought that'd be a great position to build on those skills and like, you know, the whole skill set. Um, yeah. And at that time I was you know, I wanted to, I was thinking that, you know, I will continue doing this uh, for, for life, basically. Um, but while I was at WashU, and even like in, in, in Newcastle, I was part of their, um, like the, the student body, basically. And then at WashU, I got very involved with the postdoc association, the university postdoc association. And then at a larger scale, I got uh, involved with the National Postdoc, so, uh, yeah, National Postdoc Association. I see. Um, so I think that was, that kind of gave me a little kind of like a mock job, basically. Like I was doing all those things, uh, which, you know, not really full time. I was doing those as volunteer. Uh, so I was doing all those things and I was like really enjoying that it was very exciting for me um so i was like you know maybe i should try to do this part full time and uh, i still wanted to be in academia and i still wanted to be involved in research and postdoc life graduate student life so i thought you know this would be a good way to combine th both those things like being involved in academia and also doing the things uh, outside lab, which I really enjoy doing kind of together. So, so yeah, I think that is how I was like, this might be a good position for me. So I think it was through my experiences, you know, it wasn't like a one day I just woke up and I wanted to be in a postdoc office. I think throughout <laughs> my, throughout my career, I think different. So yeah, that's how it, it happened. Great. Um, so just to elaborate on that, many people might not be aware of what National Postdoctoral Association does or um, maybe you can touch upon what exactly the organization does and what was your role as a volunteer there when you approached them in what capacity people can get involved. Right. Yeah, I think National Postdoc Association, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a really, really, really great resource for all the postdocs, not necessarily just in the U.S., but all over the world. Um, so National Postdocs, uh, although the, the, the organization is based in the U.S., and a lot of things are uh, kind of dependent on the country because, you know, there are policies and there are like, you know, advocacy team, which different governments have different, you know, budgets and funding for science. So I think it's it's different in that sense, but I think there's a lot of resources for every postdoc. Um, so National Postdoc Association is a nationwide uh, association, which gives the toolkit to postdoc. That toolkit could be for your research, for your extracurricular activities, uh, just your overall overall development as a professional, not just, you know, like as a researcher. You definitely get a lot about your research as well. Um, so for example, they have regular seminars. Those seminars 
are so like you know it is on a big spectrum so for example it can be about how to do your taxes for someone you know who's new in the us it's really important for them but then it's also like some of the seminars can be about mentorship how can you seek a good mentor or how can you be a good mentor to your grad students um so and i think that's really important if you want to become a pi in future like how to be a good mentor um so there are a lot of like career development um like uh, uh seminars which you can attend okay. most most of the universities have a affi- affiliation with the national postdoc association so basically they pay for membership so you, oh. you, the postdocs don't have to pay for the membership so uh then i was at washu washu paid for that membership and i think it's like they pay like this bulk money um which is like for 1000 post to pay you know the bulk membership fee so for postdoc is basically a free you know organization to join and meet people who are in similar position all over the you know like all over the country basically um and uh, they do a national conference and that national conference they bring in you know speakers from outside uh they have different you know uh committees so uh committee like say for example like advocacy committee which helps you uh learn about what are the current uh you know uh what is the current uh advocate advocacy topics which postdocs can get involved in what like say policy making uh, like a lot of like you know government uh kind of um uh not even like the government but i think university also has policies for postdocs right yeah. so for example like maternity leave or you know vacation time or sick time uh if your university don't have those kind of policies because you're not a student but you're not technically a staff as well yeah. so you know you need to kind of be your own advocate uh so yeah you can learn all those things at npa um they also have a diversity task force which i'm the co-chair of um and they um so i would you know i i really enjoyed working working with the you know npa there's a great group of people and you learn so much from everyone because it's not just the postdocs it's people like who are higher up in academic setting who are in leadership roles like deans and directors so you kind of get their side of story as well and understand how can you be a good postdoc and what can help you and what you can ask to 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 better yourself or help yourself so as a part of a uh, diversity task force the experiences that you had how are you now you know building upon those experiences in your current position at UIC right um so i think the so i i've been the diversity ta- i've been in the diversity task force for a year now it was like last year in 2020 late february that i you know got that position mm-hmm. um so so i would say like been a year and also i would just want to add that npa kind of works on a virtual basis just because it is you know all over the country so mm-hmm. so you know the pandemic didn't really affect npa because it was already virtual so okay. all the all the you know um activities were on computer anyway um So I think what what I learned from uh that time and like in that position I mean I'm still in the position but and what I guess things I'm using in my current position are are like how to um I I'm trying to str- I'm struggling with like you know right words here but uh I think uh, I would say that how to get diverse voices heard because there's a lot of like so postdocs there's a lot of like you know uh issues which postdocs might have and you know if like one of could be like status quo or power dynamics between your pi and if you are from my if you are from a marginalized group or if you're international postdoc those power dynamics can be enhanced yes so how can the postdoc postdoc office be a supporter for you like what can we do to help those postdocs be heard and uh, what are, what are, what all challenges they are having so one example could be like if a university does a climate survey for the postdocs the climate survey can it's anonymous first of all so the postdocs can actually tell how their postdoc experience has been 
in lab but not because you are not just in the lab right you're in the university there are university resources policies which are for you so are those helpful so postdocs can answer those uh, questions and based on those questions i guess postdoc office and the university can can change things hopefully uh as you know you might have noticed that there's a big push last so last year there was you know a big push for social justice um you know given the climate in the us uh what we saw um it wasn't new you know yeah. it's it's always been happening but it was you know a, a bigger push which is a great thing so now universities are a lot more um uh i'd say conscious of what they are doing um so there's a lot of like you know in recruitment of people from marginalized groups uh underserved group underserved groups and then retention of them like why those people are like not saying yeah. so i think that's really important so what can be done um and it shouldn't be like the burden shouldn't be on the postdocs to ask for something but somehow that is the current situation the burden should be on the on the leaders you know in the academic position who are higher up with power to make yeah. those changes so burden should be on them so i think that's my my role as in the postdoc office is to figure out what is needed and how i can help the postdocs um because i've been that i've been in that position right so i don't want postdocs to take out time away from their actual job yeah and uh, lose that time which they could be doing something else so so yeah i want to help them basically yeah, yeah I mean, what that- i'm hearing is like a lot of visibility and access and i guess uh resource management all those things that you uh, experienced through your you know uh time uh, in the npa right. are helping you now help po- more postdocs at your right. current job yes yeah so i and also like you know going back on the climate survey so at npa me and my other co-chair so we have made this like a resource file and which is on the npa website basically which any university or any postdoc can download that and that can help you you know uh you know kind of analyze what your life like what the postdocs in your university what they are going through I so it's a yeah. free resource guide for people to download and uh, yeah okay. i mean i'll really uh, see that the way you kind of decided to move in different direction from a hardcore research so i think the viewer would be more interested now is i think this question about generally most of people on the postdocs are busy life so actually you're more working than a graduate student because you're like have a more responsibility despite that uh, how can like people are or maybe you can give your example that how if i ask you that how did you plan ahead because for any new transition a new job requires a planning ahead uh, and requires a different skill set to be acquired in in addition to what a phd and postdoc mm-hmm. may inherently have something so if you could tell us little bit about nice. those those steps you took and 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 uh, and what people mm-hmm. can can acquire and there could be a possibility to acquire during their own careers in postdoc and phd's so i would say that you know uh, first of all like you know phd's and postdocs they already have the skill set which i have right now <laughs> like you know it's nothing like you know totally new which i had to go and learn uh, i think there's a lot of transferable skills which you know um people in like like you know when you are a postdoc if you're a new postdoc or a, you know a few years down the line in your training you still at least have like 4 5 years of lab experience right so combining your phd um so when i started uh, like like i said before like you know while i was a postdoc outside my lab i was involved in a lot of groups um and that groups where you know it wasn't just like the postdoc association i was you know also involved in you know a uh, couple of other groups um so that made me kind of you know realize that what other people are thinking about what other people are doing 
also it, I think it was even if I didn't want to you know go in this direction I think it's still good to get involved in a lot of groups on your campus um, just for your mental health well, well-being basically you know uh, you just don't can't stay in lab 24 7 right uh, so you know you gotta get out and meet people um, see what they're doing talk to them just you know go to different events um, but and while doing those things, I realized that, you know, that's what's fun for me and I'm more excited to do that. Um, so I think it was early in 2019, I would say that I kind of started thinking very seriously about the transition. And at that point, what I did was I, because yeah, I had a certain idea of what a postdoc office is. And I wasn't just limiting myself to postdoc office. I was also looking at, you know, graduate school. Uh, you know, PhD affairs. Um, so, so basically, the the office of the graduate, like you know, research office at a, at a university. I still wanted to be in academia. Um, so, I kind of had a certain idea what things were, but I thought it would be a good idea to talk to the people who are actually doing those kind of jobs. So, I started reaching out to people. I reached out to people on LinkedIn. I went on the different university websites and just looked at their, you know, contact information and I emailed them personally. Um, I think email is a great way because going up to someone you see on a road can be a little bit daunting, but when you email, the person is not in front of you. You can just do the email, you know, you can be brave, I guess. Um, and, uh, and I think people are usually very, like, helpful. I would, I mean, you know, I, in my case, people were very helpful. They were always responsive. There might be a certain cases where I didn't get a response, but I would say like majority of the people did reply to me. On LinkedIn, I, you know, directly, uh, directed messages them, I DM them, but there were certain people who were, who had common connections like with me so i asked my common connect that was very helpful uh both people and there were only two people who i talked to in person and those were at washu one was in the postdoc office the other one was in the graduate office but all the other you know all the other meetings which i had were on phone so for like you know because they were at different universities so one was in kentucky and i was at st louis and you know what the other person i talked to was in chicago um so it's just you know it was obviously a you know, postdoc you can't really go around meeting people if they are in different you know locations so all my uh informational interviews were on phone and i think that was very helpful i made a cd which was a little different than an academic CV. Uh, a lot of universities do like, you know, uh, CV workshops. So it's really important to check with your graduate school, with your postdoc office, if they have those workshops. If not, it's really important to ask them to do it. <laughs> because, you know, that's kind of, you know, one of the things that they would actually, they would like some kind of feedback from postdoc and what they want. So, so yeah, definitely tell them my she was so nice uh, she looked at my cv she had, uh, you know helped like pointed out some of the things which can be which were still more academic so she said that might not be helpful um and then i started applying and i think around um i think february i started getting interview calls but then in march there was hiring freeze uh in 2020 so i think that was a little kind of like oh like you know what's gonna happen now um uh, but I still had my lab job, so I continued doing that. Um, but I kept following up with the people who I interviewed with. Um, yeah, I think like, you know, email is a great way because you can still email people without feeling like you are, <laughs> you know, uh, kind of getting in their space. Um, so, so yeah, I kept following up with them. And then when the hiring freeze was over, I was offered this position and, uh, and, and yeah, and I, you know, I obviously took the position. Um, I had actually knew someone who worked in this office before, and she had great things to say about this office. So I think it was, you know, kind of like, a, okay, you know, I know someone who's been here. So, so they're, what they're saying is, you know, it's true. So, so yeah. Uh, regarding the skill set, I would say that, you know, I got a lot of those skill sets while I was working as a postdoc. Um, so I think the biggest thing is like, you know, the like collaboration and, you know, um, and like 
like management basically so when you're a postdoc i think you probably apart from your you know, your science lab you order things you you know might organize a meeting uh mark might you know be part of the postdoc symposium might help organize that um and uh, if you do get involved with the postdoc association you know you can you can help uh make some like seminar series or you know any professional development activity which you have done either as an organizer or as a participant is still like you know you you learn that and some of the universities basically as as a phd student i think some of the universities make it compulsory to do professional development um uh, i'm not sure about postdoc though i don't think washu does that but uh uh some universities for my aid uh i think uh, university of texas does it so yeah so what i'm trying to say is that you know as in the lab you learn you like when you order things to for your lab and you need to manage those resources uh you make presentations you know how to talk to people uh you do collaboration with different labs so you know how to uh you know collaborate with them and you know how to get the best for them for yourself um and then you have seen your pi be a good mentor so you can actually learn from the good things they did and then from the things they didn't do um so you can kind of be an advocate uh that didn't happen to me so i want other it ha- it ha- does happen to other people you know i didn't get that resource so i want other people to get it so i think it's always you know to look at a bigger picture you already have those skill sets those transferable skills it's just you need to apply them from outside the lab to the office so like right now what what i'm doing is i'm like organizing uh like workshops for the postdocs here and how do i learn about those for workshop is because i did those workshops when i was a postdoc so i'm just bringing those things right now uh to a different university but from a my like my perspective you know my lens um also i think it's great to involve postdoc in in the process so they can tell you know, this is what you want this is what you don't want um other than that i think the skills which i would say that you know you might need to kind of work on uh would be uh because you know not everyone might have a uh, experience with policy or diversity or advocacy uh but, but yeah i think uh, the biggest thing i would say is project management which every postdoc has done and they know how to do that So yeah, apart think- from transitioning from postdoc to your job like mid pandemic mm-hmm. <laughs> and adjusting to pandemic work uh, style and i guess part work work from home part you know being in the office mm-hmm. what is the biggest challenge that you faced when you uh-huh. trans- yeah i think uh, you know um starting a new job is always you know challenging you know i mean everyone has at some point started a new job uh if they're if they're a postdoc um so starting a new job is always challenging but to add change of field or like the work style and change of a city uh you know uprooting and moving it can definitely be daunting um i mean pandemic wasn't the ideal time to move to a new city because you know I haven't really met my team in person so I've only met one person um in person so and so it can get a little bit isolating at work um at home you know it's a new city during pandemic how are you going to meet people you can't really yeah. meet people right I hear you <laughs> <laughs> so so like how are you going to make friends and so basically kind of I uprooted all my support system in St. Louis and moved to Chicago um but uh but i guess so it's but it's not just me you know everyone is going through uh you know the the pandemic and i obviously don't want to say that um compare my uh, struggle with anyone because you know i've been extremely lucky um and uh that you know i have the job and i i had the capability of moving to a new city and you got a new job <laughs> right, right yeah so you know so i've been extremely lucky so pandemic was you know i'm like no complaints apart from the fact that i cannot meet people which is like a very small thing because now the technology is so advanced like 
you can always talk to people and you know being an international i guess a uh, scholar uh when i came here or when i went to uk we kind of uh what do you call learn the art of skyping <laughs> that you know and being connected to your your support uh back uh, back home wherever that may be um so yeah i think it wasn't you know a big deal for me uh just like you know hanging out with friends sometimes can get a little difficult and at work i think what can get a little difficult is that because it's it's different that when you are in office there are people around you there are small things you're learning you know, there's there might be small nuances which you know oh like where, where's this form yeah. basic thing you can just go ask the person right but you cannot do it now uh so i think there there they they can be a little like the transition took a little bit longer i see then for me to get comfortable in my position mm-hmm. and had it been in person i think it would have been a little bit quicker to get comfortable uh personally i'm also like a people person i like to be around people i like to talk to people um so so yeah so i think i would just say that you know it's been great it's just been a, the transition took it for me to get comfortable was a little bit slower than i what, what i wanted yeah. but but now i'm there and you know so so i think that's that's good and hopefully um things will be back in person soon so i can make new friends here yeah sounds sounds like you're liking chicago yes yes of <laughs> whatever i've seen uh yes yeah i mean it's really uh going i mean just going back to the the answer you gave about postdocs phd's and their transferable skills and the way they can plan it i think the what i got summary in there is the that despite our research work um we should definitely keeps our eyes and ears open to mm-hmm. hear and get involved not just know things but do things in in hand and acquire those skills on the way and and kind of i think the key is in key, at this case what i learned from your is is networking asking going to people asking them what you need <laughs> and understand uh, even in pandemic people can use these these uh resources which is of course built over the time it's not that within a month somebody can just go and ask and get things but but as a post doc we have a lot of things on disposal which we even don't look at it yeah and i think you rightly mm-hmm. utilized all those resources uh, uh for your career transition i think uh, people surely can learn from from these these uh, resources which you mentioned yeah right yeah i would just say add that you know you, people might not be aware of the resources what their university has because sometimes you know there's so many so much information which you get on your uh, orientation day that you know you you just forget and then you so get so like i guess uh like uh, you know just put your blinders on and then you're working in the lab and that's you know but i think at some point you know just take a breath and you know just talk to one another postdoc and ask about you know what resources they have utilized which you haven't and share or or what you have and you know just kind of ex- have that exchange if you don't like you know have any postdoc friends uh definitely reach out to postdoc office if you don't have a postdoc office in your university uh ask your pi about the postdoc association which is a group led by postdocs if you don't have a postdoc association national postdoc association has a guideline it's a step by step guideline how to start a postdoc association in your university start that you know that would be you know if you started it uh, that would be great you know you, you, you and if you want to go in this field you know you can tell that i started the postdoc association in my field so i think that's uh, that's a, that's a great thing to do so i think it's just like you know just keep asking people like you know outside lab like uh, what can what can be what else can you do outside lab i think that's mm. most important and right. if you don't like it don't like it yeah. yeah i think trying new things and just taking that additional step of reaching out to people mm-hmm. i guess exactly. that people definitely like to help right i mean right and yeah and if they don't like if they don't say anything they don't say there's another person yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I think that I agree I mean definitely it, it doesn't take anything away 
if there is no loss mm-hmm. in asking things right um and the question i think generally which is typically uh, i would say stem or a phd level fellows have about the job stability and kind of future career right so people generally in after phd okay think okay what i'm going to do so uh in such kind of job where you are working in uh, as a field like what are the different scopes and options in future what you see and how how the job kind of stability looks like if people want to grow in there and for the longer term right um i mean yeah you know so so like postdoc is not a permanent position it's a training time so and that training you know you have to take it as your professional training and that profession could be whatever you want it to be you know it doesn't have to be one particular profession it can be multiple professions it can be anything so when when you sign up for a postdoc training just use that time as a training and uh and you know if you want to be a pi uh get get involved in grant writing and because i think to become a pi you have to write grants uh grant writing and publications um ask your pi if you can get involved in grant like their grant writing if you can write your own grants fellowships get feedback a lot of places have uh like a, a writing group join that group um do a mentorship training uh during your postdoc um so a lot of universities will find that app like you know like will make you more like you know kind of like your cv stronger that if you have mentorship training um because then you can when you become a pi you can be a good mentor if you don't want to stay in academia in the sense of as a pi and if you want to go uh, like you know outside academia i think it's again um you know you are you're a scientist you have all the skill set you can go if you still want to be in research you can go in industry uh you can go in nonprofit uh you can start your own nonprofit you can you know there are so many like you know uh entrepreneurs which are scientists because you know they have technology they have worked on um so it, you know going in industry is always like you know you can you can work on that if you like to write but don't want to be in academia there's science communication you can write uh you know be an editor uh go in journals uh you can work in the office like i'm working um if not you can you can you know it's it's just like there's so many things you can do like uh uh you can be a consultant uh so i know a lot of people who are in science consultants um i did some actually uh you know volunteer work as a consultant and i was doing my post doc um and so yeah you can become a consultant uh for um for for bio related companies startups um so so i think it's it's you know just kind of like what what do you want to do and how do you even realize that is that when you when you know all those options are available for you if you don't even know i think that's you know that's the first kind of barrier you have to overcome and what options are available to you and and once you have those options available like you know uh at this point i would definitely like to add that do your idp idp is a developmental plan it's freely available on science website it will it's like really cool because you can kind of match your skills and then it will kind of you know match the the career which you might be good at uh you might you don't have to take that career option you know it's just, but it's just good good matchmaking tool you can put your you know what are goals you have which you want to accomplish so definitely you know do idp every year um uh but with job stability i think you know you cannot be a post doc all your life uh and but if you do want to do that kind of work like what a post doc job is that's fine too and then you can become a staff scientist and then you can become a senior scientist and continue doing the research you love the lab you love but not do the the grant writing or the pi thing which you might not love so become a scientist in an, not in industry but in academia in a lab uh you can do that as well so it's just you know you need to figure out what you want and for that you need to know what options are available that's where you can ha- take help from your post doc office or npa yeah thanks vipul because 
not many of us actually know all these careers exist like we we mm-hmm. have the as you were saying like we have these blinders on and we are just working in the lab and we just know these words through some you know if we know someone in that career we are mm-hmm. sort of exposed to those careers but just answering this question you probably told many people about new career options that they can go into after postdocs sure. and i think that is one of the you know the motivation behind this kind of conversations that we are doing through stem professionals chat so that people are aware that these opportunities exist and then mm-hmm. just m- making them aware and hoping that they will look into those options as possible career choices and not getting stuck into this you know i have to choose between academia and industry or else i'm i'm, I'm not useful enough mm-hmm. so one uh, one question as we are coming to the end is that do you sometimes miss being the academic scientist and how do you overcome that feeling yeah i mean you know i have been in lab for like 15 years so you know that's a big part of my life so you know sometimes obviously i do to miss uh you know just the the experimental side of it um and you know just setting up an experiment and, and then you know once you're a scientist you are kind of you know you you write your own protocol and then you do it so i do similar things right now is just in a different setting um you know i still you know write up things and you know start a new program um but uh, but yeah i think uh, I wouldn't say that I miss it enough to go back <laughs> but but uh, but I do I do miss sometimes and uh, but then I'm still you know around in academia and uh, I can still like you know write uh, stuff and get involved uh, if I want to um because I al- I'll always have that skill set right I'm just never going to lose it um so so yeah I think right now I I sometimes miss it I think it's just because I'm quite new in my role so it's kind of just kind of that nostalgia but I think the time I will hopefully not miss it that much uh, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so I think right now I think it is uh, it's just you know and learning a new job right now so I think that's very exciting so yeah, yeah I think, I think going from missing to reminiscing phase is Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to take a while i think yeah because all yeah, of us are just... like conditioned to do experiments and it's hard to leave that pipet and you know mm-hmm. <laughs> do something else. i this... think many of us are afraid of that right mm-hmm. yeah especially in this pandemic when you don't see people around the events are not in person it becomes a bit time like even the person who right. have been working in the lab or kind of research setting we feel like oh wow no events no mm-hmm. postdoc events <laughs> so so i, I mean certainly i, I could do to your like uh, ability to make this decision of transition going a new place mm-hmm. setting up a working a new program and especially this kind of job where you need to interact with people otherwise it doesn't work <laughs> uh, i guess many people might be wondering do you really need to do postdoc to apply for job like yours or can uh-huh. they transition right after phd i no i don't so i, I don't think it's essential to do a postdoc uh after like right after their phd they can they can apply for a position like this um however i think my my postdoc kind of helped me because i was part of the postdoc association uh so i knew a lot of how postdoc office works so i think that kind of helps me uh however i don't think it is necessary with that uh, we have a final question that if people want to reach out to you um, mm-hmm. and ask for any advice what would be the best way to reach out to you and get connected with you right uh, so people can you know uh, reach out to me on my linkedin um and uh, so i guess like the easiest way like you know just bipul sharma and in chicago basically i guess you can you can find me there if not i think uh, if the video goes on youtube you can put my link there or something absolutely um, right? we will include your details yeah so yeah so i think the best way uh to reach out to me would be on linkedin uh i'm on twitter as well um it's uh my handle is vipul19sharma um i uh however 
it is uh i don't know how professional that twitter is <laughs> so so yeah but i think yeah I, i'm fine like you know you can you can reach out to me at any of those places that's fine with me all right so wonderful thank, thank you, so you ripul it was amazing <laughs> Thank you thank you for having me I think that was this was great talking to you it was you know kind of like you said it's kind of like uh going through my journey I also kind of uh, revisited some memories <laughs> so that's good Yeah hopefully many people will get inspired and get back to you and saying well, thank you for sharing